Hello, everybody. What the fuck is this thing? You ever use one of these? I, I haven't. Well, I haven't in a while, but uh, I should. I should. That's for the cleaning the keyboard, right? Yeah, but like, is that is this a real thing? I just it's yeah, just, no, no, it's it, next to my computer. No, right it now. works. It works, and I fucking need to do that because I probably got cum stains in my keyboard from 1997, <laughs> just chilling. Like the is that a real thing? You think you go to people's computers and you could touch a button and be like, "Yep, yep, you've done some damage on here." <laughs> <laughs> I there's no doubt I have like, and this it's gross, but it's definitely true. Like little fucking pieces of food and shit. Oh in, yeah, in between keys and like that's the shit you need to clean it. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think um, who was it? Was it uh, Steve O from uh, Jackass? I think mm-hmm. he was using that shit or something like it to get high. Like, really? Yeah. Like he had serious, serious issues where he was doing like every drug under the sun. Is it just air? It's just air, I think. Yeah, it's like compressed air or something. It, if it, if it smells like there's some other stuff in there. Oh, that's probably whatever it is. Is what he's getting high off of. Yeah, probably. Um, you remember when people used to do? Um, I never did it. Uh, whippets or whatever with the whipped cream bottle. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't. I never did it either. But I think that's like. I never caught on to that. Yeah, I I think that's no. I was gonna say that's big in the gay community, but it's not. I think poppers <laughs> are the thing that's big in the gay community. It's called poppers. <laughs> Whippets is like going for the gay community. Yeah, I don't know. There's like certain drugs that the gay community likes, and then they do it, and then they fuck. And oh, then, really? Yeah, I don't, don't ask me. I have no idea. But I, poppers, I think one of them is called, but I don't know how it works. Or poppers remind me of Mary Poppins. <laughs> Mary Poppins, and then there was like these pretzel snacks that had like you remember they had like uh, cheese and like combos, a combos, combos. Yeah, yeah. I, I was never, I mean, I've had them and they're all right, but I, ne- I don't yeah. think I've ever like craved them. You ever craved no. them? Yeah. No, I never craved them, but they were always, they were always in the vending machine one. Right. And they had That's like true. multiple <laughs> flavors in the vending machine. Yep. It, like it would always be like winter mint gum on the bottom. There'd be juicy fruit. There'd be <laughs> Nobody like, ever bought that shit. <laughs> nobody ever touched the shit on the bottom, but that would be the shit that you would try and put your hand in and reach for and be like, oh, dude, yo, I can almost get this free yeah. pack of gum. Yeah. And then like combos would be there. Pop tarts would be in the shit. There'd always. be the yeah. the yellow lays. Yellow lays is always just a staple. Like no one would buy yeah. it, but it would be like faded yellow because it'd been there for so long. <laughs> Let me ask you, lays versus ruffles. I'm ruffles. Ruffles, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I like the ridges in my shit. Yeah, me too. I like the ridges. Um, you like the ruffles sour cream or the cheddar and sour cream better? Sour, just regular sour cream. I like the cheddar and sour cream better. Really? I fucks with the cheddar and sour cream, yeah. But I do like, Lay's makes a honey, a honey barbecue. Oh, yeah, those are good. That's, I could eat a whole, like a whole diesel bag of that yeah. shit. Like, someone cracks that at a barbecue? Yeah. I'm just like, oh, you done did it. Those are <laughs> <You> really good. <laughs> you remember the, um, wasn't there like a competition or something where Lay's was like, make your own fucking thing, and then they would pick <laughs> the best ones? Then they had like feet flavored and shit. (laughs) I think the winner was like chicken and waffles. Yeah, and I ate them. They were pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, have you tried them? Yeah, they were pretty good. I never tried those. I don't know if they're still. Are they still out or no? I think so. Yeah, I definitely saw them in the in the grocery store. I felt like you know what? 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 I was gonna say I felt like they did a like Mountain Dew Code Red where they brought it out for like a minute and then just took it away. But maybe not. I no. I think they did initially, and then they were just like you know just just sell it (laughs) like just. To sell yeah. the whole shit. Yeah, what were you Damn. gonna say? I, I cut you off. My bad. In um, in like Europe, they have all flavors that like we don't have here, and they're all weird flavors. Like really? they'll have like um lemon flavor chips, pick- lemon flavored yeah. chips. Yeah, Lay's like Lay's no. makes them, but they distribute them in um like different countries. Oh, so they do that McDonald's shit. Like McDonald's does that. They sell different things in in different countries. Do they? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they have some of the same staples everywhere, but yeah, in different countries, they have different things that they add on the menu. I mean, I uh-huh. guess it makes sense, you know, like if you're in a place where the diet is like mostly fish, I guess like so. yeah, have some more fish on the menu to get people to, you know, like they're going to change yeah. with the culture. Have you yeah, ever seen those, those joke Lay's ones, like where they have the fucking fake shit, like, you know, lint and feet like cause are when, they real or are they just no just no 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 it's people right? fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. around because like you know they come out with a weird flavor all the time yeah. that they're like let's put some funny ones i laugh my ass off at a few of those they um they have jelly beans make some weird shit but they oh, make actual 
like flavors like they'll do booger and like dirt and fucking <laughs> dick weasel <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they um j- they they do the thing where yeah it's like you know it tastes like this one's like coca-cola this one's you know, like popcorn the popcorn jelly bean that tastes like exactly like popcorn is fucking wild you ever i've when i ate that thing i'm like this is fucking crazy they really got this shit to taste exactly like popcorn Son, yeah, jelly beans are incredible how they fucking pack so much power into one little-ass fucking, like, thing. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan, but you know what I had the other day, which I am a huge fan of? What? Gummy worms. Oh, gummy worms is shit. I, got... I prefer mini gummy worms. Oh, no, I'm sorry, mini gummy bears. <laughs> oh, mini gummy bears, but not with the sour shit on them? Not oh, the no, sour... I like the sour shit, yeah, of course. Yeah. But I would take I would take gummy bears over gummy worms. The regular gummy bears over gummy worms? Yeah, Harborough. Oh, you're wildin'. <laughs> I'm never disagreeing with you more. <laughs> you, yo, I'm telling you, you take, well, okay, so I prefer mini gummy bears compared to gummy bears, but if you take regular gummy bears uh-huh. and mix it with the Sour Patch Watermelon, so you do gummy oh, bear, that Sour Patch delicious. Watermelon, uh, gummy bear, so it's like a fucking gummy bear sour sandwich. Oh, that's probably delicious. Sorry. I had the I had the budget, like, CVS brand... Um, gummy worms the other day, and when I took the first bite, I was like, I should have just, you know, manned up and got the fucking official gummy worms that were in the yeah. budget ass ones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were still good, but like after I finished eating them, I started feeling like shit, and I was like, oh. But yeah. then again, I don't know if I would have felt not like shit if I ate the regular ones, but yeah, you probably would have still felt like shit. You know what's banging? What Airhead makes a, a multicolor, um, like it's like a rainbow, like thing you ever seen it yeah 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 i think so like the tape thing right like the tape well they have the long one but then they make like a mini pillow sized one i i haven't seen the pillow sized one yet but i'm a big fan of everything warhead does remember the did you used to do the thing back in the day where the sour ones where you'd put it you know no homo put it in your mouth and just be like (laughs) (laughs) and just like have to fucking fight it like they would do the competition where you put like five you'd be like oh i got this shit Son, people used to like, oh, I would always be like, yo, this, oh, it's going to be so bad. And then you just like, it's it wasn't that bad. Yeah, like, no, it wasn't it was that bad. Like yeah. A little sour. Yeah, and it was always kind of tasty. Yeah. It was always kind of tasty. But, but then afterwards, is, it just turned into a fucking mint. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is why we all have diabetes in the U.S., though, because we're talking yeah. about like a pastime is like putting these fucking things packed full of sugar in our mouths and like suck out as much sugar as you can, bro. That's the game. Son, <laughs> do you remember? Well... I think we spoke about this last week, how kids would sell candy in school. Mm. But then, like, the school started getting healthy, and they took away, like, I think they took away the Snapple machine. I had forgotten about that whole thing. You just reminded me of it now. But then there was, like, an underground black market. And I don't know if you remember, but, like, Mr. Moresco, um, the earth science teacher, used to have, like, a stash in his, like, in his room. (laughs) And he had, like, he had the good shit. He had, like, fruit roll-ups, like, like, sour shit. And we, like people would go there in between class, man. Yo, click, 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 click. Yeah, hook it up. Let me get the, let me get the sour shit. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that about that teacher, but I do remember how, yeah, like what well, what year did they make the change? Our junior year, maybe was it, or was it sophomore or junior? I feel like junior because it was probably yeah, later where we I were like, like ah, we're past that anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because we were already yeah. going to like we were the already deli going or, out. Yeah, yeah, during the during the lunch break, we were off campus. But um, yeah, I, re- I remember that though. Like we had all the fucking Otis Spunk fucking meyer cookies and shit there used to be pizza they had a slurpee machine yep and then we went in like one year and it was like no we only have organic kale now thank you very much yeah they (laughs) They got rid of everything the thing is you got to start like i feel like you got to start kids when they're young if you're gonna have give them healthy shit because mm-hmm. if you give them the shit that's tasty as fuck and then you go back to the healthy shit, they're just going to be like, fuck you. I don't want to have that shit. But if you start them young on the healthy shit and keep them with the healthy shit, then they'll be like, yeah, it's what we eat. It's just the healthy shit. Yeah, I guess so. It's like, I mean, giving a crack fiend crack at like an early age yeah, and, and then, then taking saying, it away from him. He's like, hey, yeah, where's my crack? Exactly. <laughs> they take away the crack and they go, here's some caffeine instead. And he's like, that's fucking nothing. I want the crack. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, yeah, I want yeah, that yeah. pizza. I don't want this fucking healthy shit people got tight at michelle obama because she tried to really she tried to like really wasn't her thing her thing was like being fit right yeah the conservatives got mad at her because she did yeah she (laughs) she picked the most like the the (laughs) shit that like is the most obvious shit that's hard to argue against like okay let's exercise and let's like eat a little better 
And people on the right were like, oh yeah, that's what you want to do? You want to fucking exercise? And you want to, you know, like, eat a little better? What the fuck? You fucking fascist. <laughs> Chris Christie, I remember, said something. Like, he was at some town hall shit. I think it was, like, at a restaurant. And he was just looking OD fat. And he was just like, <laughs> Michelle Obama's trying to go in and dictate what we can eat in our cafeterias. And people were just like, Look yeah. at you, man. <laughs> Uh, he's gonna be in the show uh, he's gonna be in the next show because he said some dumb shit about marijuana he apparently went on another rant where he's like they want to hurt these kids the kids these liberals want to hurt kids by having legal marijuana he's Dude, just trying to stay you. relevant look at you you're a fucking fat ass you don't think you're doing harm to your kids when you take them to mcdonald's and they watch you put down two quarter pounders with cheese and two apple pies and a large fries and a, and a snack wrap and whatever the fuck else you eat he probably goes in on a menu oh they, there's the their famous picture of him taking his little bag of M and M's and pouring it into a oh, big box of M and M's at like great. a basketball game or some shit. <laughs> That's what. I, so I've always said like if if you don't have self control like over yourself and body like how can you have you know like control of like other shit? I don't know. I don't. I think there's a correlation between like not being able to control something like That's directly what, on you. And then you're supposed to like fucking put that out on other people like you can control them. You know, that's a really interesting point, actually. I don't know how I feel about that because that could be totally true. I could easily see that being true that, mm -hmm. OK, if you can't control yourself in one area, well, how the fuck are you going to control yourself in other areas? Mm -hmm. But I also feel like maybe it might be the opposite in that, like, OK, so if somebody, somebody has their one outlet where they go nuts like, Chris Christie has that one outlet where he just fucking, bleh, bleh, I'm going to eat everything. It's like, bleh, bleh, bleh. And the reason he does that is because in all, every other area of his life, he has to be so fucking disciplined. Like, oh, here I go. I got to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning again and put on my tie and go be yeah. fucking governor in New Jersey and follow this rigid fucking schedule. And, like, so in every other way, he's so buttoned up and going through the motions that, like, the one outlet where he fucking goes nuts is food. Like, think about, like, Bill Clinton, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, when he was president, like... Okay, so he was, he, there were upsides, there were downsides. He was like a neoliberal kind of guy, but um, nobody denied that he did, he like, he busted his ass. Not always for yeah. the right things, but he busted his ass when he was president. But then also he was having sex with fucking everybody in sight. <laughs> like yeah, that's with, true. With um, uh, Monica Lewinsky, like she was a fucking White House intern or some shit or secretary or whatever. And, you know, like he just fucking peeked his head out the door and was like, oh, oh. <laughs> What are you doing, darling? I got some here for you. Uh, How do you fucking think you can get away with that? I isn't that amazing? I was thinking about that too the other day. Like you're fucking president, man. You're yeah. in the White House. You really think you're gonna get away with it? What a little secretary's gonna come in and blow you real quick? Unless he unless he nuts in like two minutes, and maybe you get away. With but it. even the Secret <laughs> Service gotta let him in, so they were covering that shit up too. That's a good point. I never thought of. You know, like they're and like, also the Oval they're Office they're has. Terrible. The Oval Office has windows all around it, like in the behind there's windows and to the right and to the left. Yeah, but no one's there. I mean, like, it's not like there's people walking in front of your house. No one's there. But like, wouldn't you, I would be fucking paranoid that like you got one little fucking hole in the curtains and you could see the fucking president getting blown like. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Didn't they say she was like under the table? Like he would be do some weird shit. I heard. Well, yeah, I mean, if you that's the if he didn't want to get caught, like if somebody were to walk in. Like, mm -hmm. what's the best thing? To Just stay under the table. Because the, the Oval Office has the fucking wooden front, wooden yeah. sides, little area for you to, to you know, scoot in there and sit, and just enough room for somebody to blow you under the table. <laughs> Damn. You know what's crazy to think? What? Like, so Trump coming up must have really been, like, I, I mean, like, he probably is just, like, a sex fiend. You know, like, he has to go four years now without, like, he probably doesn't, like, bang his wife anymore. Like on, on some real shit, like he's, that has to, like sex has to cross his mind. Like, and he definitely was cheating on his wife, you know? And like, when I'm 70, I hope I'm not thinking about sex anymore. But yeah, really? I, I think you're right that I think, but I think he's the type of dude where he's wired. To I think, think he about definitely, that. yeah, I think he's that kind of person where, I mean, with all the stories too, when he was younger, same thing. Like, yeah, playboy and like, just yeah, like models, fashion shows yeah. or whatever. Uh, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. And yeah, I have no idea. Like when I look at him and his wife, do I think they're happy? No. <laughs> Does that make so. me a bad guy? Like I, I don't think they're happy. I don't. Oh, I, like I'm trying to imagine what it, 
like what it was like being in the White House on his first day. Like, could you imagine? Because with him, he's an interesting character. Like, I could imagine with the Obamas, like the first night they're in the White House, that they're like, I mean, look, you got to keep it real. Everything else aside, he's the mm-hmm. first black president. Yeah, and, and like he gets in the White House that first night, and he's with Michelle, and it's like they're probably like, "What the <laughs> fuck just happened? You're president! Yeah. Like, is this, this is fucking crazy?" With Trump, I can't like picture like what did he did? What did he do? Like he walked in and he's like, well, "Let me get a diet coke, tremendous, believe me." Does, does this motherfucker have a coke button on his desk? Yeah, I saw that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He it it said it's a red coke button, which everybody was like, "Easy, you don't want too many red buttons over there. You press the wrong one, <laughs> fuck up and nuke Botswana or something." <laughs> so on Saturday Night Live actually had a funny ass skit. They had um, they were making fun of the Pepsi commercial, and they were just saying like the producer was like about to like direct the scene, mm-hmm. and he like calls his parents real quick, and he's like. Mom, Dad, like I'm, I'm the main person in charge of this commercial. Like this is all my idea. Listen, let me tell you real quick what we're gonna do. He's like, so it's like, you know, about like the protest and everybody's gonna be marching, and then, he, and then like he like pauses. He's like, oh no, you don't think we should? And then like he's like, all right, well, uh, grab a neighbor or something like that. And he brings a neighbor. He's like, try and get a black neighbor. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like going through the whole shit. It was, it was mad funny. I give SNL and, props this week because they made me laugh. So then at the end, they were like, everybody told him no, but he's like, do it anyway. Is that what happened? Yeah, he was like, uh, can we back out of this or something like that? And they're like, nope, we're shooting now. And like Kendall Jenner walks out and she's like, we're actually shooting this great commercial. It's going to be hilarious and everybody <laughs> loves it. And then it's like they cut away. Oh, that commercial flops so bad. <laughs> that shit was fucking bad. Um, Speaking of uh, things that make us laugh, uh, did you see um, – did you see the new president show that with uh, the Trump no. impersonator I like? I didn't watch it. How was you it? You got to watch that shit. It's Is funny, it good? man. I know. I should have watched it. I'm fucking it's idiot. It's so funny that I wouldn't even care if the stuff he's saying isn't funny because his impersonation is so fucking good that it's like, I don't even care if you fucking make me laugh with the shit you're saying. Cause, but I was laughing, to be fair to him. It was funny. But like, even if the fucking writing was shitty, I'd be laughing. So his impersonation, because everybody's got a Trump impersonation. His shit is just, you, his is the best, like the, oh, not on even, some next level shit. On some next level shit, never. Uh-huh. Like, it's so good that, no, I can't say that. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say? say, like, if I, well, I mean, I was going to say, if I take off my glasses and look at him and listen, I could think it's Trump, but I'm so fucking blind that my mom could be standing in front of me and I'd be like, Trump, is that you? Like, yeah. so, so that's, a, that's Alec Baldwin looks like him. I mean, like he sort of looks like him when he does his shit. Yes, he certainly looks like him. They do a great job with the makeup with Alec Baldwin for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, his actual impersonation, though, I don't like that much because he doesn't he doesn't have his mannerisms down at all. Really, like his mannerisms are very I don't know. It just it doesn't feel like Trump. Um, the Trump the Trump personator I love it does. It looks exactly like Trump, and also. Alec Baldwin's cadence and his and how he talks is not really that Trump like either. He just kind of does the, like he does the face like yeah. That, like he, yeah does he does that, that a, lot, a lot, but his his impersonation is like heavy handed and like mm, blah, 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 mm. yeah, a little much. Yeah, yeah he probably where, they probably told him to like spruce it up a little bit too for this shit. Yeah, whereas this guy is like, I mean, he could do Trump in his sleep. He, I mean, yeah. He's just fucking everything. He's nailed everything. I'm sure you could see some clips on, uh, like, if you don't want to watch the whole thing from last week, there's definitely no, clips I'll watch on, it. I just definitely clips the, on YouTube that you should check out. One of them is does, like, oh, go ahead. He he's just in different situations, like doing Trump shit each segment. He's just being Trump doing different shit. Yeah, like one time, um, he went to Trump Tower. <laughs> like legit to, Trump he Tower. He went to Trump Tower, and the guards are standing there, and he's like, "How you doing?" How you doing? It's good to see you. You're doing a tremendous job. It's incredible. It's incredible. Anyway, I'm gonna go to the penthouse. Hold on. I gotta go to my. I gotta go to my apartment. Okay. Uh, let me. I'll be right back. And he's walking in and shit. Um, he, they let him walk in the building. They let him walk in the building, but they stopped him eventually. They actually. Oh. He actually did a longer segment like that back in the day when he was on Fusion. Fusion mm-hmm. is you know the, a different TV channel. You know, like uh, doesn't get as many views as Comedy Central there, but. Oh, hell no. Um, but it was funny. It, like he he actually went even further in back then. Um. 
what else did he do? Oh, there was one scene where he's sitting, he's sitting on the steps in the city, and he hears a fucking horn or something, and he's like, truck, it's a truck, it's a truck, and then he acts like a little boy and, like, runs after it, like a truck drives by, and he's like, do the thing, do the thing, and he does it, and he's like, honk, honk goes the truck, honk, honk goes the truck. Yeah, no, he's good, man. He's he's fucking hilarious. They, they were on Howard Stern. It was him and the dude who oh, did uh, yeah. Bernie Sanders. That's right. Uh, uh, James Adomian, I think his name is. I'm sorry, man. I fucked his name up there, I think. But it sounds he's, he's awesome, too. Seeing it. Yeah, he he's awesome, good. too. Yeah, him and Bernie. In fact, I'm, I'm guessing here, I don't know, but if they don't have him making a cameo as Bernie in this show, they're fucking up. Like, you gotta, gotta have it. You gotta have it, you know? Yeah. You I'm know. surprised there's no woman out there that can do like a good Hillary or something like that. There that like is. They would even... the one from uh, SNL. She does a good Hillary. Oh yeah, she is good. Yeah, she does yeah. a good Hillary, and I'm not even a big fan of sure. SNL, but she does a good Hillary. She does a mean yeah. Hillary. But she wouldn't go on some Comedy Central shit. Um, she or might not she be would... able to. She might not contractually. She might not be allowed to for whatever. Yeah, because, that's true. Yeah. You know, Mar does a good. Mar is good with his hands when he does like Trumps. He's like, you know, when he does like his little yeah. like. He, he does. does like, Trump does a lot of this. He does a lot of yeah, that one. There's like, like he does his hand like this. He's like yeah, and Mar will be like, people are talking. He does know, this like, and he does that. He does. <laughs> he does that. Yeah, he. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Somebody's gonna beat off to that. Someone's gonna splice yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So damn. They did the when I was mocking Richard Spencer for being like a Nazi, mm-hmm. and I, I did the fucking hand symbol. And some and people obviously oh. clip that out and fucking put it up there, and it's like uh. that's what um Colbert did. That uh, he said something about Nazi, like it was like he specifically did it, and then after was like that won't get cut into a uh, <laughs> like whatever <laughs> instantly, like, instantly of course. Supposedly he's taking heat for something. I think he oh, said something. The, yeah, the cock sucking lips. He said about uh, Trump like. Um, the only thing your lips are good for is being Vladimir Putin's cock holster or something. He said that on air? Yeah, and people are like, ah, that's homophobia and blah, blah, blah. Nah, I don't agree with that. I think he's just joking. So, yeah. like, you're allowed to, you know, like, if you make a joke about white people or black people or gay people or whatever, does that mean you're against that group? No, you can make a joke. You know, like, if you're if you're really t- treating everybody equally, then, yeah, you should not pull punches from anybody. You could say whatever. Yeah. But I, I I didn't like it just because that it's fucking bullshit. Like, the one thing that these guys keep talking about is the thing that I don't think is Russia true. Shit, right? Yeah, I don't think that shit is true. I don't think it's true that he's, he's Vladimir Putin's puppet. For fuck's sake, he bombed his top ally, and they just rejected the... Um, the Exxon deal, like if they had approved that Exxon deal that Exxon had with the Russian government, then I mm-hmm. would have said, yeah, like that's not good. You shouldn't have done that. And maybe there was some sort of financial deal cut behind the scenes, but they didn't do it. <laughs> they rejected it. So but the only thing I can take away from that is it's actually not true that he's like, he. In, if anything, he's doing the opposite. He's escalated with Russia too much. Yeah. So, and I, yeah, it's hard to believe that he like, I mean. He's uncontrollable. You can't be somebody's fucking puppet when you're Donald Trump. Could you yeah. imagine how that phone call would go if Vladimir Putin called him and he's like, Donald, I have pee-pee tape of you and hooker pee-pee on you back when you were here in Mother Russia. And how would Trump react? Like, oh, now I'll do whatever you want, Vlad. Yeah. No, he'll be like, he'll fucking hang up on him and he'll call it fake news and he'll fucking go to war. Like, that's what he would do. He wouldn't fucking... The like, funniest shit I heard Trump? on... Yeah, he's he's fucking. You said on your show when he was negotiating his uh, contract for The Apprentice. Yeah, that was so silly, man. What a the silly guy said he asked for a million dollars. <laughs> he asked for a million dollars. He got he wanted a million dollars an episode. He got sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> the way you described it was hilarious. It was just like, um, seven hundred thousand. They're like, nope. No, try again. We're nowhere near. <laughs> Uh, 400 maybe? Don, we'll give you 10. <laughs> like, the negotiation. He got fucking owned in that negotiation. Yeah, but that's just, what it is. That's why he br- always brags, I make tremendous deals. I'm a tremendous businessman. The best businessman. Dude, you went bankrupt at least six times. Your businesses went bankrupt at least six times. You know who doesn't get to call themselves an awesome businessman? Somebody who went bankrupt at least six times. I went bankrupt zero times. I guess I'm a better businessman than Donald Trump. Like, yeah. that's not a... You can't fucking say that. And just like he said in the debate, I brought that up too, how, you know, he was like, uh, I heard somebody say that if you have small hands, you have so small something else. 
I have no problem over there, believe me. Believe me. You saw him at his dick size in the debate. Like, dude, thou doth protest too much. Don't just fucking let it go. Nobody was thinking about this fucking yeah. size of your hands and the size of your dick until you were like, they're, they're really tremendous, believe me. Those dudes who drive like fucking uh, convertibles, like red sports car, you know? And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Or no, the big the big trucks too. They're or big, big trucks, fucking, yeah. Yeah, that, that's Monster the general trucks. rule, yeah. I don't know how true it is, but it maybe to a degree in some Probably cases. pretty true. You yeah, just I go mean, around and start asking guys. Well, <laughs> def- <laughs> definitely the um, the anti-gay one is true when they, like, you have these Republicans who are super anti-gay and, like, we shouldn't la- allow gay people to get married. What are you, crazy? No. Family values and everything. And then what happens? They get caught oh, blowing yeah. a dude in a New Jersey turnpike bathroom. There's been like four or five different Republicans who like, or or also uh, evangelical pastors who are mm. like, yeah, no, you know, you got to do the right thing and straight marriage is the only way. Yeah, like little kid shit. <laughs> Ted Hag, oh yeah, that happened. That's happened too. Ted Haggard, who was a big like preacher, was caught um, doing crystal meth off a gay hooker's ass. <laughs> When he's a big guy, you know, who's Damn. like, oh, drugs are bad and fucking family values is the way to go and homosexuality is wrong. And then he got caught. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. There's one guy that's like prancing around now. He's got like curly hair. Uh, and like, ugh, I don't remember what it was. He got caught up doing something like Richard Simmons. <laughs> You said no. a dude with curly hair. I was thinking of Richard. No, but Simmons. the guy's not. It's not like as curly as that. He's like a political guy, and he's on TV. Ah oh, man, I wish I could fucking think of his names. I don't know. Oh, but now I, I kind of wish I knew who you were talking about. John Oliver like exposed him for doing some shit. Now the guy's like just the voice of reason on on fucking everything. I don't know. Fuck him. You don't know what channel or whatever it was on. No, I'm I'll get his name. It's gonna bother though. me. You said it was now, a political guy with curly hair who's in media? It's, or it's like media black, or? curlyish hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and he's uh, in media? Yeah. No, he's like, I think he's a, a political, like a political person. Political, uh, like a politician? Yeah, politician. Okay, uh, a guy with black, curly hair, whatever. I don't know. Rick Santorum? I don't know. Oh, Santorum. Um, so, listen to this. Uh, today, I'm going through my mail, which I never fucking do, because fuck mail. And um, I get I see something from like a law firm. I'm like, oh, what the fuck is this? Like, I got a message from like a lawyer or something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, whatever this is, it can't be good. But so I started opening it. You know what it was? It was about my fucking dad's old property. What? The like, fuck? so everybody knows the story. I've told it before on air. But my dad died six years ago. Now that's a while ago. And longer than that. So. It was 2011, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Yeah. Like, w- when he died, he was in debt, and he was underwater on, you know, where he lived, the place where he lived. And so we were advised, you know, my sister and I, like, you, know, you guys have, like, the inheritance rights, but if you inherit it, like, you have to fucking then pay all the shit. Like, you're not inheriting anything. It's like you're inheriting the fucking debt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was... <laughs> so you uh, could just walk away from it and then everything's fine. I was like, okay, so fuck it. We'll walk away from it. Mm-hmm. So we walked away from it, but then, like, we got fucking harassed by debt collectors. Like, like right after it? Or, like... No, maybe, like, starting a year and a half to two years after it. Oh shit! Like I'm talking harassed. But like, you had been told too that like you could just walk away from the shit, right? No. So yes, legally we knew the law, and the law is we're not responsible for dick that you know yeah. he owed. Like okay, I don't have to. Yeah, that was him. That wasn't me. He's yeah, dead. I ain't paying you. shit. You can, go, yeah. you can come to me with his bills. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm not paying that shit. So, but like they tried. But that's what's fucking sleazy about that industry is that they'll try to like if people don't know the law, like I knew the law, they'll try to fucking shake you down. Like which is why a lot of people here, if they come here and they're like immigrants or something, and they don't know and they don't have the connections to figure this stuff out and. Like, they might end up paying debt for their parents that they don't have to pay because they're just being shaken down, basically. That's crazy. So these motherfuckers somehow got my phone number and called me nonstop back in the day. Um, 
at my the last place I lived, they would even ring the fucking doorbell all the time to the point. Are come, you serious? Yeah, they like every three house? weeks. Like every three weeks, they would come ring the doorbell. I just wouldn't answer. I just wouldn't fucking did answer. You, did you see what type of person it was? Because fucking uh, Oliver did a special on this shit too. They're like sleazy people. Like they'll send like they're on some like mob mentality shit where yeah. they like come after their money. So what they do is they try to they're, they're trying to serve papers to get me to go to a court to be at some sort of a fucking debt hearing or whatever. And Damn. um but they have to by law, they'd have to give it to you. They can't give it to somebody to give it to you. They have to give it to you. <laughs> so if you just don't fucking take it. My sister was gangster with it. She opened the door once and they were there. They were like uh, they asked is it her is it you? Like is it her name? And she's like no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, how the fuck do they know? Yeah, and, and so they tried to give it her. She's like, no, I'm close the door. So do you, like, accept responsibility for it if you take the papers? I don't know what the laws are about that. Like, I don't know if you'd have to show up or whatever the deal is. But anyway, so I got the like thing the today. the person ever. <laughs> they're just now foreclosing on his property from back in the day, six years later. They're just now foreclosing on it. Damn, yeah, shit takes a while, dude. That shit just happened to, I mean, I, I won't say who, but I know somebody whose father was living in a house for a minute and like the, the and he had, he had owed money on the house and all this stuff. And they, um, they kept saying like, we're going to foreclose the house. We're going to foreclose the house. And like he had stayed there for at least two more years, two, three more years. And then one day they, they were like, they were like, okay, it's. Next week, you have to be out by, like, this day. But he had been there for, like, three years up until that point. This person I knew was like, I got to go and I got to, like, move stuff out and I got to take, you know, all this shit a while ago. And then, like, I, like three years later, they're like, oh, like, my father's finally getting out of the thing, you know? And I was like, oh, fuck. Jesus, man. Yeah. It's a, it's it's a weird, cluster there's probably There's probably mad people that they're doing it with that, like, and how the fuck do they remember? Like, if you're in Bumblefuck, Kansas, or if you're in... Like, New York. I mean, like, people got to stay on top of that shit. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a weird experience, uh, having, like, somebody come after me for some shit I knew I wasn't responsible for. Yeah. It's like, what, what the fuck? No. <laughs> you should fucking get away. I didn't ask for any of this fucking bullshit. Yeah. I mean, it's good you were aware of it, because if you weren't, like, I mean, sometimes if people's parents pass away, they don't know what's up with their, you know... Yeah, well, I knew I know somebody who's a lawyer who knows that shit up and down and they were just like yeah. yeah you're just not you're just not on the hook for it you're not on the line for it think about yeah, I mean, think about if out. i was how much that would be such bullshit that so, would be the stupidest rule ever like yeah your parents else, or somebody yeah. who you're related to can do some crazy shit and then somebody come after you like, what the fuck is that like imagine okay let's say my dad had committed a crime like <laughs> uh since he's dead we're now gonna arrest you for that you were gonna charge you with the murder like, <laughs> like it's just the, like i didn't do it what the fuck is this this is fucking ridiculous yeah, that would be wild. Um, oh, by the way, last week we were, uh, we were telling injury stories. I remembered, mm -hmm. remember how there was a moment where I paused and I was trying to think. I'm like, I know I have more, but they mm -hmm. just didn't come to me. They came yeah. to me afterwards, and now I jotted them down so I could remember to tell you. What were they? Oh, did I just fucking accidentally delete my notes? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all, I think I'm going to get it. Yeah, I got it right here. I don't know why I always fucking do that. That's the second time I did that. Um... So, one of them was, it was the dumbest fucking toy I've ever seen. Like, I have no idea why they ever sold it. It was super fucking dangerous. The mm -hmm. fact that my parents had it was like, what were you fucking thinking buying this thing? It's this little thing where it's like a circle, and there's like a, a pole in the middle and like a wheel on top. And what was it, a stripper pole? <laughs> That'd be super creepy, a pedophile stripper pole. <laughs> and if you turn the wheel, the seat spins. So you sit on it, you turn the wheel as a kid, and then you start going in circles. Wait, is this life size? Like, is a yeah? So imagine like a you know like me at seven years old, let's say. Okay. And I sit I down on this circle thing that's like you know a little bit bigger than me sitting down if I was sitting down with my legs crossed. Mm -hmm. And, but there's a little pole in front of me and a wheel, like a, like a, like, um, for a car, like a car. Yeah, yeah. And then you turn that wheel 
And when you turn that wheel, the thing you're sitting on starts spinning. Oh, what? And then if you, the harder you spin it, the faster you go. So I was sitting on the thing and I was fucking playing with it. Mm -hmm. And then my sister's, um, my sister and her friend were there and they were like, oh, I got an idea. How about you sit on it and we'll spin it. So, and they're older, they were older than me, obviously. So, you should have just been like, I got an idea. How about you sit on it and jerk me <laughs> off? I, I was too young to think like that. Um, so they started spinning it, right? Spinning the mm-hmm. wheel while I'm sitting there and I'm going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And then they spun it too fast. I tipped over and I fucking cracked my head on the table next to me. What? Yeah. And I needed stitches. I still have the scar. It's somewhere in the back of my head. It's a little thing. It wasn't that bad, but you could imagine how angry my parents were when they were like... I would have got up at my sister and her friend and been like, fuck you guys. Well, I was too young, but I probably would have said that if I was of age (laughs) enough to think that. But So I went to the hospital, had to get stitches, but I still haven't given you the best of all my injury stories, which means it's the worst. Even This one's even worse than the fucking... The toy one sounded pretty good. the, the, um, the, the, The one from last week with the clavicle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that was probably the worst in terms of the actual injury, or maybe the mm-hmm. hockey stick one was, where it was right next to my eye. Yeah. But this one is was the worst in terms of just the stories. Amazing. So, again, my sister and her friend, this is a different friend. When I, when I was younger, like, you want to, you know, I want to, like, hang out with them because I was yeah. young and, you know, she's however many years old. I did the same shit with my sister and her friends. I was going to say however many years older. Like, I could just say it. There's no reason for me not to say it. Four years older. <laughs> Um, so I, we were fucking around and there was this thing that we had that was like a fold out bed, mm-hmm. but it's a kind of bed that's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's like super cheap and it's just like cushions where it's like, it's like three couch cushions that are just like sewn together basically. Okay. Yeah. Right? I think I, you eh, probably eh. vaguely kind of know what I'm talking about. Just think of like Maybe. pillow cushion, like cushions on a couch, like a normal size couch, and three of them just kind of sewed together, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. like a little fucking head thing at the top for like what's supposed to be a pillow, like built into the bed thing, right? Okay. So uh, we're fucking around with it, and we decided, oh, let's make like a roller coaster. Let's put it at the top of the stairs, and pu- I'll sit on it, and you push it down. And we did that a few times, and it was fun. And it's like, yes, I'm doing like this roller coaster thing. It's awesome. Like, we created a ride. This is great. And then they're like, oh, yeah, 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 but it's dangerous. So let's like, you know, let's strap you in to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's actually a good idea. It's safer. You definitely want to strap me in. <laughs> definitely strap me in. And so they start strapping me in, and then they're like, wait, wait, wait. We got to like tuck your arms in too to strap you in. Like, you can't just fucking be strapped be in. Like you got to have immobile. your arms strapped in. So, yeah, oh. so I'm strapped in. They tied, like, a jump rope around me and strapped me in on this fucking thing. They pushed me down the stairs. <laughs> I swear to God, it happened in slow motion, dog. They pushed me down the stairs. So I go down the stairs. I hit the bottom, right, like that. Mm-hmm. And then instead of the fucking futon thingy, like, going down and then falling back, it goes down and then, like, it it goes up a little bit and like it teeters at the top and then slowly but surely it just fucking falls <laughs> flat forward. And I'm, and you I'm, move your I'm strapped in like, like this. Nothing. I was strapped in like this. Like you're on a bobsled team. <laughs> exactly. I'm strapped in and I'm, I see it happening. Like the whole time I'm viewing it, it's like, Oh, and then Damn. I fucking land. It was all, all like the fucking pressure was on my nose. And it didn't break, but I had a mean nosebleed after that. I just fucking face plant. It was like the definition of a face plant. Damn, son. Yeah. I was fucking injury prone, man. I was a little fucking dorky kid who just like got hurt and shit. It just happened. Yeah. Some, isn't that weird that some people are just like injury prone? Like they're just more fucking prone to getting injured? Yeah. Like, I don't know, they're so more you, clumsy. You didn't have any, like you didn't have stories like this, right? You didn't have like bunch no, of I injuries never, and shit? But I never did like – like I would never – I feel like if someone were to present me with that situation, like let me strap you onto the shit. I was shit, like a seven-year-old. I didn't know what to say. I know, but he, I don't know what it was. Like even at seven, I would be like, nah, like I'm not – no. Like, but like when you played sports, talk. you played sports your whole fucking life. You never got hurt playing something? No, like because I don't know. I would never – like I would drive to the lane in basketball, but I would – I don't know. I would make sure – I think the only time I really got hurt was just – 
maybe a couple months ago, I rolled my ankle really bad. Yeah, it sucks. Rolling. And rolling your ankle is almost worse than breaking that shit because it's just like breaking it, it can recover. Like rolling it, it's just a pain in the ass. Like the shit is always just going to be lingering and thinking about it. Do you still feel it? No. No, I don't still feel it. But yeah, at, like good. after for a couple months, like I was still shook playing ball on it. Um, Yeah, speaking of that, now I'm realizing like I'm I'm only 29, but uh, like I was the other day, I, since it's like golf season now, I was like, Oh, let me take out like the train, the swing training aid. Kind of like if you have like a baseball bat and you put the donut on the baseball bat and it's heavier. Yeah, I yeah. have a club that's similar to that. Like it's a heavier club and you swing that and it's, it's, you know, good for, for golf. So I picked it up and I started swinging it. And like on the fucking second swing, I just felt like a little tweak in my neck. I was like, fuck. So I was like, you know what? Let me just not, let me put it down for the next like six days. I felt it, and it was not, and it wasn't like a pulled muscle, because I know what a pulled muscle feels like, and that's like, whatever, yeah. it'll be good in like a day, whatever, it's all good, but it was like, I tweaked something, and like, I would think, well, at night I'll be good, but then I would be laying down at night, and I'd be like, oh, my fucking like neck worse. hurts, yeah. and it was like that for a while, it, it feels better now, but I don't know, like, you know, it could come back in a day or something, like, it's just, it's it's weird like that. It's weird for athletes because I feel like for athletes, like 29 to like 34 is like almost their primes, yeah. you know? Yeah, totally. Like that's when they start hitting their stride. Because like mm-hmm. when, when they're young, I look at like someone on the Knicks, like Chris Tapp Porzingis is like- Too inexperienced I, and yeah, like you don't have like- 19, 20, his body's still not developed. Yeah, you're not sharp enough yet with your, no. with your moves and shit. Yeah. But like for us, me and you right now, like- 28 29 washed up at 28 29 but you know we're what fucking washed up it might it might have something to do with the fact that we're like most of the day i have to fucking sit and read yeah and like i'm i'm always fucking sitting still like i have to for what i do yeah. so i guess if you're training your bodies yeah like on a professional level it peaks like it starts you know yeah. it'll peak at a different point than like me and you who of course have just played like intramural basketball and stupid shit our whole lives where we peaked at like 19, 24, 20, 20. yeah, yeah. Twenty three, twenty four was when I was yeah. going to the gym the most, and I was most active, and yeah. But then after that, it was like fucking bleep, fell off big time. Yeah, so, I guess it, yeah. It all, it all depends on what like you do with your life. It's so fucking cruel though if you think about it, because the way the work week is structured, it's like how does anybody expect um, just a regular person, a normal person, to be able to work out? Like, who the fuck has time to work out? If you work a full-time yeah. job, how are you working out of, with, like, a, a good, serious workout schedule? Like, a yeah. real fucking workout schedule. You can't. You can't. You can't do it because then guess what? You have no other time to do anything else between that and, like, shit you got to do. Just, you know, grocery shopping, going to the bank, errands, yada, yada. That's like, what I texted you about the other day. So, like... Like at my job, there was this lady who retired who was dumb old, like dumb old. And like people were asking her like, oh, what are you going to do now that you're retired? She was like, oh, I'm going to go to museums and like I'll finally get to go downtown and like just, you know, I don't have to worry about coming into work. And and I was like, yeah, but like you're about to like die. Like you can't even like <laughs> fucking appreciate like like it's going to take you dumb long to just get to the train. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I want to be retired now so I could just wake up at seven in the morning and like maybe run to the train or like ride a bike to the train. Like, she's gonna have to take three hours just to get to the train, and by the time she gets downtown, like have a half an hour to like do shit because she's gonna have to get back on the train and do another three hour trip home. Like, yeah, the she's way done, and like she's just been working her whole fucking life. Yeah, the way you framed it was like she's however old, seventy something, and now her life is just starting. That's the way you yeah. framed it. Like yeah. now is how she when she's finally starting to do the shit she wants to do, and it's like that's a, yeah, that's a sad fucking reflection of reality. And like, like yeah, I get okay, it. you start going to museums and shit, and you learn about art, but like no one wants to talk to you. Like you know, <laughs> oh. no, but it's, like it's cold. It's like I get it, and pe- people would accuse us of like, well, you don't get it. Like we need work to make the world go round, so like you have to fucking have people do shit they don't want to do. Okay, maybe to an extent, but like, can we not have a better balance, like work life balance? You know what I mean? Where 
people get more time off? Like I've showed the chart on my show before. There's this chart that shows how much paid time off we have by law versus the rest of the modern world. Mm -hmm. Everybody else has some paid time off. We don't have any paid time off by law. Like there are places where they get a full month every every year. Like oh, we just take off the month of August. I don't know what you're talking about. This is what it is. Like you get the whole month off, of course. You know, and here that's like unheard of. And yeah. we get spoiled to an extent when we're younger, but spoiled not sp spoiled because of how it ends up being. But it really should be like this forever to have like they have the summer break. Like yeah, yeah, like well, you teachers. Have, you have this fucking yeah, teachers exactly. They got a, their schedule better than than most because it's like that's so important because what I can you imagine what percentage of people it's probably like seventy percent of people or more who are not working a job that's like their passion. So if they, you're not working a job, it's your fucking passion. Well then, fuck you need you should have that time to do to hit a reset button, hit a like, reset button, and 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 if you're into art, <clears throat> you know whatever, go to the museum. If you're a painter, paint. You got all, you know, more time to cultivate the things that you like that make you feel connected to people and human and all that stuff. It's yeah. just a cruel fucking thing, man. Like a four day work week would be cool, would be better, or, you know, six weeks paid vacation by law or something. Like, there, we got to do better, especially because yeah. think about it now with, with computers and technology <laughs> getting to the point where it's at, there's no excuse anymore because now they could do a lot of the work for people. So why the fuck, like, but it's crazy because you'll have only a small percentage of people owning the technology and then they're going to take all the benefits for themselves and fuck everybody over and it's just going to be a clusterfuck. Yeah. So. Do you ever see it getting to a point where you would do like what Mar does and all those type of dudes, like take like a month off or something like that and just. Yeah, maybe a month off or something. Sure. But in terms of he does a show once a week, I wouldn't want to just talk yeah. once a week. That's I would true. be itching to talk like. On like the third day or fourth day, I'd be like, I want to talk. Like, I want to. I want. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. The news builds up because the news doesn't wait for anybody. You know, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. you know, there are commentators or comedians who you know do something like once a week or whatever. But it, like in the time in between their last show, there were probably like thirty-five news stories that are he wants to talk about, but he doesn't even have enough time to talk about all of them. Yeah, that's you true. Know. And people look to you for certain stuff, too. I mean, like, a lot of people rely on you as their news source, you know? So, like... Yeah, and they've gotten accustomed to, okay, he releases about 40 vids a week, mm -hmm. so that's what it is. Like, that's what they can look forward to. So, it would be... But, you know, but I... It's uh, me also. Like, I like... The way it's laid out now, I kind of like it. You know, I could see myself maybe... I don't know, when I'm, like, 40 or 50 or something when I'm much older, mm -hmm. uh, separating, oh. separating it, um, maybe doing like three days a week or two days a week. I was thinking about it like wrestling. You know how they do uh, Raw and SmackDown? They, yeah. Back in the day, it was Monday. It was Monday and Thursday. Then they changed it to Monday and Friday. Now they got it Monday and Tuesday, which I don't like the back-to-back, -back, but they do it to make that. They have Monday and Tuesday now? Yeah, The re and here's why they did that. They did that because... It, everything was always pre-recorded. The SmackDown was always pre-recorded. So oh, they, so that shit wasn't actually on Thursday. So it wasn't actually on Thursday. They would just air it on Thursday. So you know, with the he hardcore fans want to see it immediately, and like yeah. all this stuff would leak on these forums. So they're like, let's just do it Monday, Tuesday. But I mean, they should do it live Monday and Thursday. I know the logistics of that are probably a pain in the fucking ass, but yeah. um, but anyway, like down the road, I maybe do like something like that, split like that or something. But I don't know. I like the way the schedule is now. There's too much to yeah. talk about, man. Fucking Donald yeah, Trump is true. president. You know, the corporate Democrats are pieces of shit. Like, there's too much to talk about. There's too much to fix. There's too much to be involved with. And, you know, if you're sitting on the sidelines, you'd almost feel like, why am I fucking sitting on the sidelines? What the... F like, you gotta fucking get involved and throw your hat in the ring here and shit, you know? Yeah. It's just yeah, one of those true. things. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you have a passion for it, I don't know. I mean, like, just work shit like when seeing this lady retire was just like fuck man like because then I, I was like sitting in my chair and i was just like i see myself like one day going up to a kid in my seat and being like yep now i'm just gonna start going to baseball games and stuff and then that kid's gonna be like that dude's dumb old like what the fuck like yeah, no, no, he he can't even like sit through a whole baseball game without like shit in his pants or something like that <laughs> 
it's that hamster wheel dog it uh it unfortunately grabs most people and you know yeah i feel some people are fortunate they're fucking ball and they could travel the world and shit like that yeah look man there you know there's a certain level of wealth that yeah is just not right <laughs> like it's just it's not right you have some people have to work day in and day out they work two jobs make ends meet barely get by can't afford health care yada yada then you got some assholes who are fuck a bill think about how much money a billionaire has a billion dollars or more that is fucking mental man Son, that is I mental. Was so... If you have ten million, you have yeah. so much money with ten million. Think about yeah. how much more a billion is compared to ten million dollars. Yeah, I know, dude. I was thinking today, so I was just thinking about like Dwayne Wade for some real, like weird reason, and he's he's getting a two year contract for fifty million dollars, with like twenty five million dollars a year. Again? No, with the Bulls. With the Bulls. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. He's on no, the no, Bulls not a new one. This is what like what he's on right now. Like that's what he's playing. Fifty million dollars for two years, and he's got no knees. His yeah. knees are gone. <laughs> yeah, he, his shit is shot. But I was thinking back. I remember when I was working with the Knicks, and Mike D'Antoni was there. I saw one of his paychecks, like his weekly shits. What was? I think it, it was biweekly or like one weekly. It was, I think, like. It was like two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Like that. <laughs> That's uh, fucking unbelievable. Was like his, it was either weekly or bi-weekly. Either way, I, either fucking way. That's unbelievable. I know. Fucking, are you for one week or two weeks? Yeah. Two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Carmelo sits out one game, and he was getting three hundred and like thirty-five thousand dollars or some shit, and he sat out the game, dude. That's like stupid. That's like why when people like get mad at a fucking person missing like a layup or some shit in the NBA, like yeah. they have every right to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but that's what like we're what we're describing here is exactly why there needs to be a progressive tax rate where yeah, yeah you tax the rich more. And by the way, like over sixty percent of Americans agree with that because yeah. even if you're conservative in fucking rural Kentucky, you're gonna hear about you know what you just described in 225,000 fucking dollars to coach basketball and you're going to go that's nice. Look, I'm not against Mike D'Antoni being rich. By all means, let him fucking be rich. Yeah. By all means, I hope he's rich, right? But like you got to fucking tax the motherfucker and like And Mar said that shit too, right? He was like like someone who makes 10 billion dollars should pay more than fucking someone who makes 1 billion. Yeah, that's exactly like, right. So right now we have seven brackets for our tax bracket for our progressive tax system. Mm-hmm. The Republicans want to reduce it to three, and what Mars said is, we need more, because if somebody makes $250,000 a year, they pay the same uh, rate in taxes as somebody who makes a billion dollars a year, and that just doesn't make any fucking sense. The difference between $250,000 a year and a billion dollars a year, I mean, there should be like fucking 40 brackets in our, in our tax system, so because yeah. you, what you do is you graduate it. And that, like the 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 why the, is that such a hard concept to fucking like like because people you know what they do they like to focus on they like to it you can easily mislead people on the issue of taxes if you talk about you know like so let's say the government takes fifty percent of somebody's money you go fifty oh, they took half his money oh my god that's crazy now that sounds really bad and people go yeah, yeah. the government shouldn't be able to take that much money but then if you tell them. Well, the person, uh, you know, had two hundred million dollars, and now they have one hundred million dollars. There's no reason to fucking flip out about the government taking that money because they have a hundred million fucking dollars. Yeah. They, you could do anything with that money. That's like having infinite money, a hundred yeah. million dollars. So yeah. there's no like it's easy to mislead people about this, where they think like. You know, oh my God, the government's oppressing somebody. But the reality is there's a certain level of wealth that threatens the stability of nations. Because mm-hmm. when the rich get too much and the middle class and the poor don't have enough, the whole system comes crashing down, man. We saw it happen that, with the Great Depression and the Great Recession. It, I mean, isn't that what's happening now? And it's, that's exactly uh, like, what's happening now. Oh. So with the Great Depression, um, the top 1% was making about 24% of the income. So 1% of people were making like a quarter of all the income, which leaves not that much for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So uh, that led to 
a gigantic imbalance uh, on top of the fact that there was deregulation. So as a result of that, we had the Great Depression and there were some other factors mixed in there as well. Right before the Great Recession, same thing. The top 1% was right back, back to making about 24% of the income. Now, when our economy was stable, the top 1% made only about 9% to 12% of the income. So, in other words, when you have the middle class and the poor, like, you know, with a future, and you have people who can work their way into the middle class and have, like, a decent lifestyle and quality Mm -hmm. of life, they have enough money where they have purchasing power, where they can go out and buy more of the goods that the so-called captains of industry are making. So... When you don't have a middle class that's stable and you have, you know, people slipping into poverty, they can't afford to buy the things that make the economy go round. So the rich think like, oh, I want all the money, but okay, you're fucking, you're shooting everybody in the foot because mm-hmm. the there's, you're threatening the long-term stability of the economy. Yeah. And that's something people like the Republicans are trying to get rid of the fucking, um, the estate tax, which is. It only applies to people who have, I think, over $5 million, it might be $5.25 million, um, like, saved. So, it's the top point. It's like nobody. Oh, it's like the top point oh two percent in the country. And what the estate tax does is, it prevents, like, just unfettered inheritance. So, in other words, like, if Paris Hilton, you know, Paris Hilton get, it, it takes in millions and millions from her rich granddad or whatever... Or, you know, Donald Trump, silver spoon in his mouth, his father was yeah. worth at least $250 million. He inherits a shitload of money. Like, what it does is, it says to those kids, like, okay, you're still going to be rich. Like, you're going to be good. Don't worry. Like, you're going to get a lot of fucking money when your parents die because they made a lot of money. But it just doesn't let them take fucking all of it. And Which, yeah. what they want to do is take... sense. It. Exactly. The, like- Who better to tax in a society than really rich dead people? Like, that's the yeah. best fucking group to tax. <laughs> Yeah. So, but the Republicans want to get rid of that. And what they do is they do this sleazy trick where they call it uh, the the death tax. And they make people think like, oh, I'm going to die one day. I don't want the government taking my money that I want to pass on to my kids. But people don't know that it only applies to people who make like over $5 million or have <laughs> over $5 million. So it's a sleazy fucking trick they use, man. It's fucked Trump's up. Trump's fucking um, tax plan was like one page long. It's just like a fucking computer paper, just one page. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, and guess who released it? Goldman Sachs, guys. The fucking Ugh. two guys who worked for Goldman Sachs were the ones who announced his tax plan, that, and, like, they wrote it. <laughs> Meanwhile, he said on the campaign trail about Hillary and Ted Cruz, like, oh, sold out to Wall Street, specifically about Cruz. He was like, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs owns the guy. So you fucking appointed all of them. Whose side? I don't understand. I see your tweets about like Obama doing his speech for four hundred thousand dollars and like yeah. um the Trevor Noah like defending him and stuff like that. Fuck Are you on his side or against him? Fuck or like Trevor just... Noah. Fuck him. Oh really? Yeah, because <sighs> the reason Obama's taking that money and the reason mm-hmm. that they're paying him that money is because he sold out. He bailed out Wall Street. He bailed them out. In fact, it was over fifteen trillion dollars what worth. That was the bailout of Wall Street. Trillions Damn. and trillions and trillions. So he bailed out Wall Street. Um he let them pay their bonuses. Like there were no strings attached. So people got paid fucking bonuses. Wall Street CEOs got paid bonuses when they fucking crashed. Yeah, the whole fucking market. Yeah. So he bailed them out and then also like People talk. He passed Dodd Frank, which was financial regulation, but that mm. that kind of let them go right back to what they were doing before. It was really weak regulation. He didn't bring back Glass Steagall. He didn't break up the banks, you know. So he did their bidding basically. Like mm-hmm. he did what they wanted him to do, and this is them paying him back. It was I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Yeah, I looked out for you. Okay, now we're going to give you this fucking random firm on Wall Street. We're going to give you $400,000, you know, and, uh, you know, you come talk and say whatever you want. And this is the way the system works. It's just just corrupt. It's It's corrupt, yeah. legalized bribery. And what Trevor Noah was doing was really disgusting because he was taking the issue of racism and using it as a shield. Like, he Mm -hmm. was saying, oh, so the first black president can't take... $400,000, but every other president can. Fuck you. 
Like, no, motherfucker, not a single person who's mad at him for taking that money is mad at him because he's black and he's taking that money. And not yeah. a single one of them is okay with any white person taking it. Look at what happened with Hillary Clinton. You know, yeah, we all fucking... argued against Hillary Clinton and because yep. she took the fucking money. Yep. So, like, what do you... It's just such a hacky fucking... But that show, like, I feel bad for Jon Stewart, actually, because Jon Stewart kind of picked this guy as his successor. And there's no way he saw that and he was like, yeah, that's cool. You don't think Stewart would have said the same type of shit? Hell no, Stewart wouldn't have said that. Because Stewart knows that corruption's not okay just because you're the first black president. Like, that's a shitty, hacky, lowbrow fucking joke to make. And that's people, like, I read the comment section on my video. People were like, uh, he was joking. Yeah, but I saw the thing and he was serious along with joking. Like, he was making a joke, but the point he was making was, I believe this point, you know? But it was sick, man. Yeah, he That's what Hill and Hillary so. did the same thing with the woman thing. Like, okay, I read articles, you know, the people writing like, "Oh, the first woman can't take money from Wall Street as she runs her campaign, and everybody else can." And it's like, no, you're not getting it. We're against everybody taking the fucking money. Yeah, you don't get to use being a woman or being a black person as a shield to say, "Oh, I'm diverse in my corruption, so it's okay." No, you just don't be corrupt. Yeah. People used to do that, like, oh, where did that happen to me once? I did some, I think, uh, I forgot what I was doing, but, the, like, I was coaching someone or doing something, the kid was like, oh, why do you do that, because I'm black? And I was like, don't, like, don't, 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 like, like, people, Was yeah, he kidding well, or was he serious? He was serious? I think he was trying to make a joke, and I was just like, don't, it's, it's not even funny, you know, like, yeah, yeah. but, like, people will use that. As like as you're right, like as a shield to do whatever the hell yeah. they want to do. Otherwise, and it's actually you know, like, super fucked up because they're cheapening when it actually happens. Yeah, you know, like when there's a real case of sexism or racism, but you were just the boy who cried wolf. You were just pretending that it like it's racist that people were against Obama taking four hundred thousand dollars from Wall Street. Yeah, you know. So yeah, it's fucked up. I call it Mick liberalism, Mick feminism, and Mick racism. <laughs> Like when somebody, oh, that's racist or that's sexist, and it's just not. It's like, well, okay, well, that's it's not real. It's the same as the meat and the chicken nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's why I call it Mick racism and Mick feminism. It's like this is not real. Like you're just fucking this bullshit. Um, so I wanted to tell this story real quick because I thought this was super interesting. I know somebody who knows somebody who. Um, <laughs> so you don't know somebody. I don't know this exact person, but I have a link. <laughs> And um, they're fleeing an oppressive country, right? I won't get into any of the details or the specifics or anything, but mm-hmm. um, it's a woman who is living in a an Islamic theocracy, and she wants to get out because, you know, Islamic yeah. theocracies, women don't have equal rights. Um, so she has to, like literally ditch her family and so she concocted this whole story you know about well we're going to study or you know i think she may have told one group of people i'm going on vacation with my boyfriend or something like her friends she said that and like her parents uh she said like no i'm going to study or something and like all systems go because they're what they're they're trying to give her an arranged marriage. God damn! And she's like, don't don't want it, don't want it, don't love the guy, not interested. But I, if I understand everything correctly, she had to like you know play the parents, play the guy, play her friends. Yeah, and, I doubt she could just be like, hey, I'm gonna leave. Yeah. So, <laughs> but she has to leave everything that she's known, basically. Because of the fucked up situation. And it's like, you know, I was thinking about it. And it's like, think about how many lives have been ruined by unfairly rigid rules. You know, like the idea that it's a cultural norm. Like, oh, your parents will pick your fucking spouse. will pick your mate. And yeah, you have that's no, wild to me. You have no say in it at all. And they maybe they'll pick an asshole, maybe not. Maybe they'll pick somebody you're not at all sexually attracted to. But guess what? You're gonna have to fuck that person and make kids with that person. Like the fact that that exists and how many lives have been ruined by being forced to to do something they don't want to do, and like 
to have the bravery to say, fuck it, I'm going to leave. And you're going to a country you've never fucking been to. You don't know yeah. anything. It, if you know the language at all, it's like the second language that you know. It's just like, man, it just uh, depresses me. Because when I think of my parents, I think of like, if they disagreed with me on some shit, or if they strongly disagree with me on some shit, the worst I'd get from them is like some passive aggressive shit. Like, yeah, yeah. like oh, you want to do that? Okay. And then, like, whatever. They'll get over it. Whatever it Mm -hmm. might be. But there are people in situations around the world where it's like, oh, you... Like, we might disown you if, you know... Or you just don't have a choice. There are some places where if you come out as an atheist, they they might tell the authorities and you could be killed. There's 11 countries where you could be killed for being an atheist. You know? It's fascinating that, like... very smart people can literally think like, oh, it's normal for me to just arrange my daughter with some random guy that she doesn't know because that's just like what it is. Like That's the power of cultural norms and religion. This like, is t- totally different, but I was talking today about um that girl Leah Remedy or whatever who yeah, was yeah, on yeah. King of mm-hmm. Queens yep. and how she's got this new show where she like broke away from Scientology or whatever mm-hmm. and she was just talking about Scientology and like, the fact that people are literally so like she like she was on King of Queens. She's like seems like a normal lady. Like yep. The fact that like she has this TV show explaining now how Scientology is so dumb. Like I could just be like, bitch. Like I, you don't need a show. Like I could fucking just t- like all right. Tell me one of the things that Scientology tells you to do. Oh, you you can't do this. Okay, yeah. well that's dumb as fuck. <laughs> like, yeah because you think like like we do I just like think that's logically like, like fucking like it. but here's what they do though and this is what's so cynical about it is they start you off with things that are just like so first of all if somebody's looking to be part of a club like that mm-hmm. they're already searching for something in their life like they already don't feel totally fulfilled and they're yeah. searching and trying to find something concrete to hang on to and the first thing that you get you get offered right off the bat is friendship so, you know, you t- take part in this thing, and what's very powerful is that all the other people around you are now supportive, they're now loving, they're looking out for you, you're looking out for them. So the first thing it offers you is friendship and being part of something that's bigger than just yourself. The yeah. second thing they do is they hit you with, up front, all the things that are that are logical and that they're like self-help things, you know? Like, they always start you with the easy shit. They don't jump right to the fucking, you know, Xenu and whatever. Yeah, like, weird. Yeah. yeah, like, that's way later down the road. They got to hook you in first. So they hook you in by giving you all the good stories about self-help and how you can improve your energy and improve the people around you. And here's the organizational tactics to make your life more orderly. And so they hook you in, and they're smart about it. And then eventually down the road, they bring in the crazy stuff. And you're already so invested. You've already paid so much money. You've already built a life around it that a lot of people feel like, yeah. I can't get me. out of this. E- well, people either can just submit mentally and say, yeah, fuck it. You know, this is I'm one of these people. It's just my thing. And other people, yeah, will realize like, oh, I made a wrong choice here. But the way Scientology works is they're very punitive with people who disagree you know they excommunicate you you're not allowed to talk to your family anymore yeah. yada yada and then obviously and that's scientology you talk about salafism for example just uh far right uh muslim fundamentalism you know apostasy is punishable by death you leave the religion they'll kill you so but that's the problem man with the rigid belief systems you know like if you're somebody who's religious but you know you you're just a moderate kind of person who just has this thing that, oh yeah, I don't know, I go to church every now and then, or I go to mosque every now and then, or I'm a Buddhist and I fucking meditate. That's cool. You know, I got, I don't agree with you because I don't think you're right in your philosophy, Mm -hmm. but I'm not judging you, whatever. You do whatever you want to do. But when people have that fucking balls to the wall fundamentalist, you know, approach to it, man, that's dangerous. And that, you know, that's not okay because it ends up becoming this all encompassing philosophy where, you start controlling other people and making shitty decisions and affecting their lives and taking away their rights. And you have governments around the world based on that shit. And it's wrong, man. It's not cool. Well, well governments that what? Just Well, there like, are governments that are... That are so we, I was just giving the example of an Islamic theocracy. There are governments that are based on religion. They're based on Islam. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just based on Islam. It's based on a rigid, far-right, fundamentalist interpretation of Islam, like Salafism. Like Saudi Arabia, they're a Wahhabi state. So, 
you know, it's if you're an atheist, they'll kill you. If you, you know, smuggle drugs, they'll kill you. If somebody accuses you of sorcery or witchcraft, they'll kill you. Women need to cover up from head to toe. They're not like, they go with a crazy far-right interpretation of Islam, and they end up, you know, treating women like second-class citizens and treating minorities like, you know, you're not equal if you're... If you're an atheist, if you're a Jew, if you're a Christian, so it's just it's a shitty system, man. It's yeah, it is. it's fucked up and it's it's really oppressive to a lot of a lot of people. Well, it's crazy to think that some of them, like I mean, like they have no fucking choice. Like they're just born into it, you know. Like some of those women wearing their head to toe shit. That's the thing is that's the other part of it is that how many people, so how many good people's lives have been ruined when they learn it's all bullshit and they don't want to go around and do the arranged marriage and yada yada. But then the other part of it is, yeah, how many people have been brainwashed by it? And yeah. so, like, they're convinced of it. Like, you, you, I'm sure there's plenty of women in Saudi Arabia. You talk to them, and they're like, no, I like this. I like that I have to cover up from head to toe. And uh, that's just how we do it. And there's, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, it is what it is. It's the system. We're being holy. We're being righteous. And then that goes back to the idea of brainwashing people from when they're younger. And, you know, what are you brainwashing them into? You know, like... I mean, I guess you could say, well, it's also brainwashing to teach people, whatever, to do unto others as you would like done unto you and to respect individual rights and stuff. Yeah, I guess that that might be a form of brainwashing as well, but in terms Trump of... Trump sort of did some brainwashing, right? Trying to get, I mean, like, because people follow him like a fucking cult. I mean, like, even stuff that he hasn't helped people on, they still defend him to the grave. Well, you yeah, know? he has a, I would guess It's like his, a cult following. Yeah. I th- I think that his uh the that base of support that will never leave him is probably anywhere from 25% to 35% of his voters. It's crazy. So but that's I mean the upside of that is how many are not that, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the overwhelming majority of the country is not going to fall for his bullshit in the long run, you know? Like he already lost the popular vote and of the people who voted for him, like what's it he had now? He's at like 35% approval rating. So, oh, and now Hillary's back. Like she needs oh, to just God. go the fuck I know. away. Just go, just go, just stop. It's bad. She's doing all these interviews. Like you know, Hillary, come on now. You know, like you're trying to stay in the spotlight, stay relevant. Maybe yeah, contemplating like the best another thing run. Is just go like, away. Yeah, don't do it. But she wants another run, man. She's fucking. You think she's itching for another run? I do. Why else would she be out there like this all the time? Yeah, that's true. You know, Mitt Romney for a while after he lost, you couldn't fucking find him. Because he he apparently was well he did later on consider running again but decided against it. And what's up with is Zuckerberg gonna possibly run? Yes, because like, he's doing all this shit now. Yes, he is. I and is that not gonna it. be good? Of course, it's gonna be fucking horrible. He's just. Oh really? Yeah, they fucking his friends were like he doesn't just want to be president. He wants to be fucking emperor. Like he's just got a big ego. He's like Trump, but a nicer Trump. Like he a nicer, smarter Trump. I don't want any Trump. I want somebody. Like, what is, what is fucking Zuckerberg going to run on? Like, what are you running on? I know what Bernie Sanders is running on. He wants Medicare for all. He wants to get money yeah. out of politics. He wants free college. He wants a living wage. He wants to end the wars. You can list everything. He wants to fight climate change. What's fucking Zuckerberg running on? He's running on, I'm Mark Zuckerberg. I had fucking made Facebook. Vote for me. Fuck you. Who are you? Go fucking, like, you created a site where people type shit about how they fucking ate lunch and it was good and they post a picture of them and their grandma. Fuck all he that. You're not ready to be president. What is that shit? Yeah, that's true. I mean, you're true. better than Trump, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm not going to fucking... And now you have Michael Moore. I just did the story. Michael Moore... What's he doing? Talking about how the Democrats need to run Oprah or Tom Hanks. Or, yeah, or they need to run... Uh, who else did he say? The Rock. Oh, The Rock. Yeah, I saw, I saw the part of his... But that's the point of the, that's like where we're getting to in politics, where it's just like it's not politicians who are going to be president anymore. It's going to be a fucking super duper celebrity, like no, but we, a fucking Mark Cuban or some shit, just some loud. But fucking, they're, they're saying that because they're convinced that you can't win running a, an actual politician who's serious and correct on the issues that'll help people. I think we're fucking dumb as a society where you can't. No, I think they're wrong, man. I really do. I think if you give people the option of somebody who really fights for those issues... Yeah, like a good politician. Yeah, then I think they'll vote for it. 
they haven't really been given the option. The, okay, so the last time they were given the option was Bernie Sanders, and mm-hmm. what happened? The DNC basically rigged the fucking thing against him from the beginning, and he started with no name recognition going up against a political juggernaut, and he went from 0% support to 47% support. He's mm-hmm. a thousand years old, and yeah. he still somehow won 22 states. So in other words, what he proves is, even with all these systemic biases against him, he was able to almost win, and he had all these fucking intangible things against him on top of the systemic things against him. So you yeah. give, and so I'm telling you, we're right on that doorstep where you give somebody, like, there's going to be a wave, man, and the wave is going to be so strong that the establishment has no shot. Like, even if they try to fucking bend the rules again in favor of a, an establishment candidate, it ain't happening, man. Like, Trump, they tried to tip the scales for fucking Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio and basically anybody but Trump, and Trump steamrolled them. Yeah. So th- that's so obviously possible to happen w- on the left when it comes to our primaries, and it can happen where a real progressive fucking steamrolls, man. Mm-hmm. So I- I'm optimistic I so. that once they're given the option of a real progressive choice— that they're going to take it. They're going to take it. I feel like it. we're st- we're still on like the wave up though, where it's like the next 4 years when we vote, it's going to be like it's going to be someone fucking stupid. Like Well, fucking, what I like, what I'm scared of the is the insult dog or whatever the fuck that guy is. <laughs> what I'm scared of is like a fucking primary where it's like Tim Kaine versus Cory Booker versus Mark Zuckerberg versus Hillary Clinton. <laughs> it's like then I would fucking cry, fucking but who's you know, who of just randoms. But, but if you have Elizabeth Warren throw her hat in the ring. Okay. If you have Tulsi Gabbard. Well, like, does, does she loses credibility if it's like Elizabeth Warren versus Kanye West. Like, you know, like some weird shit like that. Like Kanye, oh my God, he did say he was going to run. <laughs> no, what I'm saying, like, doesn't a, Elizabeth Warren, like with all this credibility and all this like good well, shit she's done, doesn't, she's got to stoop down to like if a fucking Kim Kardashian ran or some shit who's got like, I was just told she's got fucking like 98 million followers on instagram or twitter or some shit like dude they have a lot of power they don't even realize it (laughs) or they realize so many fucking followers it's a third of the country it's a third of the country yeah like what the fuck she has to put out one tweet like i'm running for president and that shit that that's like a nuclear bomb dude (laughs) that story would change the world look (laughs) it's certainly true they have a lot of power and a lot of influence but here's the deal, man. I'm optimistic that you give people... Yes, if you put Kanye West on stage with fucking Elizabeth Warren, no, the people are not going to vote for Kanye. Look, the Democrats are not the Republicans. We're not... Like, the Republicans, they pretend like, yeah, we hate Hollywood and we hate celebrities. But then anytime any celebrity says anything remotely conservative, they're like, <laughs> did you see Clint Eastwood? We put him on yeah. stage and he spoke to a chair. Wasn't it awesome? <laughs> That's such a good point. Yeah, and with fucking Donald Trump, they're like, we hate Hollywood, we hate fucking celebrities. We just voted for Donald Trump for president, yay! Like, you guys are fucking liars. Now, on the left, they accuse the left of like, oh, all you fucking Hollywood liberals. But no, Cause, you run Because they don't have any. You're so right. Once, uh, like, someone comes out and they're like, oh, I'm for Trump, it's just like, oh, we love this motherfucker yeah. Mel Gibson, probably, or some shit. Exactly, yeah, Mel Gibson, uh, Vince Vaughn. Um, Vince Vaughn likes Trump? Yeah, he's super conservative, Vince Vaughn. Oh, fuck that fucker. <laughs> but yeah. I'm telling you, you give people a choice of Elizabeth Warren versus fucking, you know, some douchebag who... Yeah, uh, Tom Hanks is a good guy, but like, yeah, have him run in a political race, he'll get his ass handed to him, I think. I don't know, dude. I mean, like, there's people... Like, people who are just fascinated by celebrities and shit. Like, if- Look, if that happens, like, let's say a celebrity runs and a celebrity wins... Mm-hmm. I will do the world's biggest Mia culpa. I'll come out here and be like, Corn was right. I was wrong. <laughs> We're beyond hope. But here's, I have hope because I've seen the fucking polls, man. And the polls show people want very specific things. They want those things I just laid out. Free college, free health care. How does the um, Justice Democrats shit work? Do you like, like, do you guys seek out who is a like who's a good candidate or like do they reach out to you guys like So the way it works is um we launched the movement, you know, I co-founded it with Jank Uger from TYT and with mm-hmm. two top uh, Bernie Sanders campaign officials. And what happened is Jank and I 
put out the signal and basically said, look, here's what we're doing. This is what we believe in. Here's the platform. Here's what the movement's based on. No corporate money, no PAC money. And if you believe in this platform and you believe in our main mission and what the rules are of this movement, um, a progressive populist left grassroots uprising, come join us. So co- go to justicedemocrats.com and you sign your name in support of the movement. Um, and if you want to get involved, there's a nominate section on the website oh, where, okay. where you nominate yourself or you nominate somebody who you think would make a good leader. And thousands and thousands and thousands of people signed up. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, so that was where uh, Bernie's Bernie's guys came in because they did all the vetting and they did all like they had to go through all those people and figure out who's going to be a good candidate, who's going to be a you know, a bad candidate, who can we dismiss up front, who gets through this round, who gets to the next round, and then eventually they have to train certain ones. And so it's a long, hard process. Like a, like a good vetting process to make sure. Yeah, not. because you have so many people who are interested, and no disrespect to anybody who signed up. I, I love all of you because that means all of you really mean well and you're trying to fight for the right things. Yeah. But, you know, there's some people who... They just don't have you don't have the pers- the 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 politician personality where you know you could be for all the right things but if you can't communicate it it's like yeah. okay um so yeah so all these people signed up and it's still going on right now man training candidates vetting candidates we got a bunch of announcements coming soon it's exciting yeah I got times. an email for like Corey Bush or some shit like that it's exciting oh. times yep it's exciting times um I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm, we're going to have some big announcements. I don't want to spoil too much, but let's say May Why doesn't Bernie just fucker? fucking get gangster and come on and like you like Well, look, Bernie's with us. Bernie's I mean, with like, us in spirit because Bernie yeah. already started our revolution. Our revolution was his basically similar idea to what we're doing. But yeah, look, yeah. man, just so everybody knows, we are allies through and through. Like I always say on my show and I mean it. Whether you're part of the Green Party, you're part of Democratic Socialists, uh, you're an independent, you're a Justice Democrat, you're with Our Revolution, these are the people on the left who I'm really united with. Like, that's where the real unity is, because we're people, if you talk to any of those people from those groups I just named, they'll Mm -hmm. tell you, they'll be able to ring it off one after the other. But hey man, what are you for? I'm for getting money out of politics, I'm for single payer. I'm um, for free college. I'm um, for increasing the minimum wage. I'm um, for stronger unions. Um, they'll go through everything. There's no um, for weary fighting. gray areas, yeah. Yeah, I'm um, for fighting climate change. So we're all on the same page in terms of policy. And since we're on the same page in terms of policy, I'm their ally. They're my ally, even though we're attacking the problem from different routes. So they're, some are doing it from outside the two-party structure. Some are doing it from within. So the whole thing about Bernie and our revolution... His group has been fantastic, you know, and I know they're, they're fans of ours, we're fans of theirs, and there's collaboration happening, man. Like we did, for the single-payer petition, we teamed up with National Nurses United, which is the National Nurses Union, and um, with Brand New Congress. Mm-hmm. So those are two other big progressive groups that we all got together and said, let's fight for the common cause of getting single-payer. And... Um, it's been working. We we had 72 originally uh, co-sponsors. Now it's at about 104 and falling by the day. More Democrats are signing on by the day. So, you know, there's juice in this movement. And every, yeah. I think people know it and people are fighting for it. And it makes me happy, man. It really does. It gives me hope, you know, because when you launch something, you never, nobody knows. Like, uh, I hope this works. I mean, we know we got the right ideas and the right philosophy and the right, but the, Will we have the right structure and will we harness the energy properly? And then everybody show everybody rose up and said, Yeah, we got it. And so it was it was a you know it was a very fulfilling uh moment. Yeah. So but so. like I said, big announcements uh coming pretty soon. I can't say much more. I'll be on the lookout. Um I think that's all I got. I was going to tell some, I was going to ask about some college stories, but I don't think I have any college stories or at least none that I probably got some college stories, but I could save them the next week. My shit is OD like delayed. What's delayed me talking. Yeah. Like when you say something, when I watch you, like your lips are like, 
like on some uh remember like the old school uh, like japanese movies <laughs> yeah the dubbing yeah yeah, yeah. i got gotcha. you all right yeah, let's cut it we, we we went uh pre- we went long enough we'll save some college stuff for next week all right guys i love you uh and corn and i will see you peace